Okay, so now we can officially start. So physics is um, the program that we're going to focus on. Uh, both uh, Dr. Shaney or Libby and myself, we teach uh, physics at South. And so we're huge proponents of our program, but we also recognize <laughs> that a lot of people come to us thinking they're going to be engineers or computer scientists, and then they end up switching to physics. So, Or they continue on, but we're happy to have them in our houses while yes. they're pursuing <laughs> their computer science work. <laughs> So, okay, so do you want to take us away? <clears throat> Me? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so uh, physics is an AS transfer degree, so you get an AS and you can get it with a focus in physics. Um, you could also get it in engineering or computer science as well. Um, at South, we're an in-person uh, main campus, so all our classes are face-to-face are -face, uh, on campus, and we're just kind of curious. So we heard a little bit from, is it Hong Fook? Hong Fook. Hong Fook. Um, yes. About what brings her to the session. But if, Sean, if you're there, you can either type it in the chat or you could um, uh, say it out loud if you have, do you have a microphone and you're able to unmute. Uh, what brings you to this session? And, and if you're just listening, that's okay too. That's okay too. So when you're, uh, so this is in person at South Main Campus, but um, my son will be going to North Seattle. Is that, how does that work or? So uh, they are separate colleges, but people do sometimes take classes at various ones. So he could take it at North um, and do his AS and you can do an AS and with a physics emphasis at North. Um, so that's totally possible. But it is possible to take classes elsewhere too. And they're I think they've made it so it's pretty easy to transfer those between the different institutions. Okay. And we are um <clears throat> we know the the physics professors up at North are also big proponents of in-person um instruction and they're trying to push for students because we have found that students learn best when they're able to be in a classroom community with others. Um and so that's that's the the piece that the physics programs are really trying to um, maintain at, okay. at the Seattle colleges in general. So I think uh, much of this will be applicable to the North Seattle campus too. Okay, good. Yeah, he he's he's um, he prefers in-person classes also. Oh, awesome. Yeah, great. That's awesome. Um, we, the, what? I was gonna say, should we keep going? Should we keep going? Yeah. yeah. Um. <clears throat> So things you do, so what we see physics is in itself is in, innately interesting, but we are physicists. Uh, but uh, you learn important skills in physics classes, which is one of the reasons I think that they're part of people's majors. Um, but things like working on a team, critical thinking, technical writing are, are super important in any technical career. And so we do focus on improving those in the context of the physics class. Um, it's a great space while you learn physics, you can also practice all these other skills. Um, so we have an emphasis on that. Uh, we spend a lot of time trying to describe how the world works, so to really explain it, both with math and other kinds of models that you can build. And we kind of adhere at South, at least, to a model of a learn science by doing science. So we do hands-on stuff, activity-based work, um, group work, and peer collaboration. And um, like we said, a lot of this is relevant for any STEM career, so it's a great foundation for <clears throat> future learning. Yeah, and all of these, so a lot of our classes, at least at South, emphasize, you know, like group work where you're working together in smaller groups. Um, uh, and then also um, we do a lot of like, uh, yeah, so the hands-on is is not just, um, not just like, you know, a, sitting in a lab and then sitting in a lecture later, but ours is really integrated. So it's not, um, you're not sitting and sort of listening um, passively uh, very much at all during the two hours of, of the class sessions. And the other um, kind of fun or kind of amazing thing I would say about uh, take, going, going to South, Central or North would be, you know, we have class caps ranging between 24 at South to I think North might be 30. But either way, you know, your faculty member is going to know you. Um, the students by name, by sight, they're going to get to actually spend time individually seeing what the work is being done. Um, so that's just a stark contrast to kind of the major universities in the area that have kind of giant enrollments and, you know, you're just one of many that show up in those things. So you can get a really intimate kind of 
you know, uh, experience in a physics class at our schools. Okay, so <laughs> I shouldn't be talking as much because I realize you're pinned, so no one can see me when I'm talking. <laughs> oh, am I pinned? Great. Yeah, you're um, pinned. <clears throat> or spotlighted or pinned? Hot. I don't know what the difference is. Spotlight, I think it, it shows up for everyone's screens. Pins just means I'm showing on your screen. Oh, uh oh. That's I thought it was the same. Does anybody know? Do you know how to do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. I, I, I might be able to figure it out. Let me see. The best we can do. Um, but okay, so what happens when you charge? These are the kinds of things that we would ask in a class, and then we would sort of experience and and practice and and in this particular situation, we're sort of focused on like a water theme today. Maybe it's because of all the wild precipitation we've been getting in the Seattle um, area. But uh, so we have a bunch of, uh, or a few little examples of like the kinds of questions we would ask in a classroom. So this one is what happens when you put a charged balloon next to a stream of water? Um, so we're just gonna play this for you and just think for, you know, like obviously you can see the video, but here's just a stream of water sitting there and someone comes and rubs a balloon just a little bit on the side with the cloth. And then all of a sudden, this is something you can try at home too. And you can see, um, it's pretty awesome. So you can actually see that it actually like really pulls the water in. And so this is the kind of thing that we would ask in class. Like, what, how is this even going on? How is this happening? And then folks would get to try it out and talk to their group and think about it. Do you want to add something, Libby? Um, there's a screaming child. Oh, you have a screaming child. I don't know if you can hear it. I hope not. Um, so I was just reading. Uh, no, I think that's great. Yeah, we, we generally give things like this. We want to focus on students being able to explain it. So, uh, you know, give them a video, give them an example, let them try it, let them figure out, and then give structured guidance to help people kind of move towards the right uh, direction of understanding on that. So that's kind of how we'd set up the learning around something like this. Yeah. Um, so here's an, oops, here's another example. So you, this is another thing you could just try at home. So you just, you take a glass of water and you put a piece of paper over the top of it, uh, maybe like a thicker piece of paper, like a construction piece of paper or cardboard, um, something that maybe doesn't leak through right away. <laughs> uh, and then you can just pick it up and turn it over and suddenly it will just stay like that. And so the question is, how is this happening, right? This is the kind of thing that we just start to find all of these amazing things going on just in the world around us and thinking about, can we explain this? Can we understand physically what's going on? And that's the kind of thing we're focusing. And I just realized that we have somebody new in the in the room. So we're just sort of explaining some fun things that we get to think about in physics. Um, we just have a really good time in our classes. And actually, uh, Dr. Shaney and myself work together all the time and plan our lessons. And so at South Seattle, at least, um, this is the kind of thing that we work on a lot. And then here's another one. So we also have these sort of wild pictures, you know, of um, things that you could do in your room as well. If you have a, like a laser pointer that a cat would play with or something that you would present with at some point, why does the light bend in the prism um, or in a glass of water or in uh, any sort of um, glass shape? And what does what makes the pencil look broken? So sort of thinking about like as light goes through sort of translucent or clear things, why does it do this? Why do we see things differently when they're going through objects like water and glass? And now I have a screaming child behind me, so I apologize. <laughs> so now we both have screaming children. <laughs> does anyone um, have questions up to this point? Yeah. No. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, I'll let you take this one. Okay, so um, in terms of physics being a transfer pathway, uh, it transfers to mo most four-year universities and colleges. Obviously, it uh, commonly transfers to uh, state universities in Washington, so University of Washington, Washington State, Western, those. But it also transfers to other places. We regularly transfer student to, students to um, Seattle University, and other places. Um, so we do uh, have that night. I know people go out of state sometimes as well. So that's definitely an option. We haven't had any problems with people transferring. 
over to those places. Um, in terms of a bigger picture program, we do often have uh, either actual undergraduate research opportunities or we can connect people to them. And we do do smaller scale projects that are kind of, kind of have a flavor of that experience as well. So we, we kind of provide some of that early on in the student's uh, educational experience. Uh, you can complete most introductory science and math requirements. So when you transfer, you can be pretty close to being at the junior level or at the junior level. Um, oftentimes there's a few technical classes that you might need to take that are like sophomore level, um, but you can get pretty far and do a lot of the math, especially um, required for a lot of pathways at our institutions. Um, and we have many campus resources that help as students are kind of moving along this pathway. So we have free tutoring that runs for hours, both face-to-face -face and online for math, science, engineering. Um, we have a free maker space and a great engineering instructor who helps uh, staff that space. And we have open study sessions with instructors and access to office hours. So we have lots of things to kind of help students in that journey. Um, we were going to try and run a poll and see if, what you were most interested in, but we don't know if we we're going to be able to actually do that. Yeah, so we can't we can't run a poll in the breakout rooms, we found out, but um, we'd love for you to either just say it or um, since there's only three of you, you can totally just say it, but we could also put in the chat what you're interested in most at this time of these. Maybe it's physics um, because you're here, but maybe you're sort of pouncing around. Uh, I will say the other thing, just in case you don't know what a makerspace is. So a makerspace is a place where um, you have lots of like different kinds of um uh, drafting and engineering kind of space, but also like a rocket club at South and also um, a 3D printer that you can use while you're at South, um, things like that. So so um, there's also just in case you aren't familiar with the Seattle colleges, there's free counseling as well, like not just academic advising, but also counselors. So we have a lot of good resources um, for student um, health and, and mental health. And, and now we have a new gym that's coming to South, which we're really excited about. So um, I think that one of the things that's really amazing about um, at least our physics department, and I and I think it is across the three colleges, is that we really care about the whole person at Seattle colleges, as opposed to just like sort of, you know, assuming that everyone's a robot and they don't come in with their own experiences. So there's a lot of attention towards, um, you know, meeting students where they're at and supporting them and really finding that joy of learning through the process. Um, and thinking about issues of equity and things like that um, in our, both in structurally in the campus and also within um, STEM, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of focus on making those kinds of spaces um, better and improving them. So is it ter Therese? Uh, Taris. Taris? Taris, yeah. what are you, are you excited about physics? Um, well, I'm an older student um, I'm currently um, actually at Bellevue College, but just in the beginning stages. Nice. Um, and I was in the AI program, but I'm interested in math. Mm. Um, and uh, um, but funding is an issue. Um, but uh, physics is, yeah. Um, I studied physics like 30 years ago, and I've forgotten almost everything. So um, That's it's there somewhere. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uncover it. The cool um, thing is that you never know all of physics, right? So anytime you think about, like even like today, I, I learned something from one of my students that was thinking really deeply about something. So that's- Yeah, it would be really, um, yeah, I would love it, but it's um, funding and stuff like that. So, yeah. So the um, other thing I'll say is there is a, um, there are a lot of scholarships available, um, both the, like, so the Seattle Colleges has a foundation that offers scholarships to students. Um, and there's also a Ready, Set, Transfer STEM program specifically that offers tuition waivers for students, depending on your FAFSA and your need. Um, but that's definitely something that you should like. There are lots of funding opportunities at the Seattle mm -hmm. colleges. Um, and so that's if that's one of the things you're curious about, there's definitely resources there. And I don't know if you can come to an open house um, next week, but I'm sure there are people who I'm would planning actually sit down yeah. with you. And, yeah, yes, yes. yes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, I know at South, there's a whole bunch of, um, a whole bunch of people who are just waiting around for students to say, I need money and they'll find you. And they work on supporting that need. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, we said before you were here, like, 
please, please, please interrupt us and ask questions at any time um, because we that's why we're here just for you. So we're just sharing the stuff, but if it sparks another question, please ask and interrupt. Uh, is it a two-year or, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this program is a two-year and then transfers into four-year universities. But um, the physics specifically, it depends on your math, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of the physics prereqs are math related. So you have to come in at a certain level in order to complete it by two years. And also um, we offer a lot of like sort of supporting math classes that you would take in a physics degree anyway, because math and physics are pretty, um, pretty close, right? Most of math yeah. was made for physics. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get in trouble by saying that, but <laughs> um, but yeah. So math is in the service. More math, the more math you know, the more access you have to sort of thinking about um, solving those higher level problems. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I have a question. Um, just you know, I was talking with you before about you know my son at least doing well in his physics class. And he thinks he's interested in it, but he, you know, when I asked him, I said, well, what do you want to do? And he goes, well, I don't know what I want to be. Um, so how, like, you know, is there a general, of course, all the general requirements he has to take. And then from there, does he, you know, work with a counselor to kind of develop his pathway or how does that work? So I can try and answer this one. And I'd say we have a couple of slides coming up that might kind of help see a bigger picture idea as well. Um, so I just quite... jumped to a slide in case it helps. Do you want this one or the other one? I was thinking this, yeah. I was thinking the first one. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so I was going to say that, you know, the, a lot of the requirements for a transfer in computer science and physics and math and engineering is all very similar. Um, so you can, you can not, you don't have to focus down especially a lot before you actually transfer. Now, when you go to transfer, if you've been trying to do engineering, you often have to apply to a specific school of engineering. So if you're going to go that route, you often have to get pretty specific. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but there are other colleges that will let you transfer without having a major completely declared. So it just depends on where you're looking to transfer, mm -hmm. um, might impose some of that decision on you. Um, I brought this slide up because it turns out people who get major in physics actually go on to do a lot of different things that aren't actually like straight up physics. So this shows you for the classes of 2019 and 2020, people who got a bachelor's in physics, you know, almost two thirds of them went into the private sector. And when they're in the private sector, they're almost predominantly employed as basically computer scientists or engineers. So they're essentially accessing the kind of jobs you get with computer science engineering degrees. Mm -hmm. but via a physics major. Um, you know, and then they also, some of them go on to do other things, as you can see here. Uh, but <clears throat> so I think that's something that people don't always know about physics. It doesn't guarantee that you have to go to graduate school and, and be a professor of physics or anything like that. It's a very solid way to get a decent paying job in the private sector um, doing interesting work. So this one also is recently a new data released by the American Institute of Physics who tracks these kinds of things. And it shows salary ranges for physics bachelors. So those same group, they were polling about what they went to do. Um, and so those, you know, who went into different areas that you saw in that previous pie. And so obviously, uh, I think it's the median 50% is the blue stripe. So 50% of people got jobs that paid in that range. The bigger bar is showing you know, the kind of variety, wide actual range. And then there's a couple outlying things that show up, which are the little dots. Um, but you can see, you know, people come out with a bachelor's degree and can get decent employment. Now this is across the nation, right? So if you look at Seattle area, it might look a little different because mm -hmm. the cost of living is different. But so averaged across the country, this is what you see uh, physics bachelors come out with. So it's, it's a decent career path um, <clears throat> for, for getting good jobs and kind of coming out with something without having to spend half your life in school. Okay. Do you want to add anything, Abby? Yeah, I was just thinking like, it, to me, it's such a funny thing to say, you know, private sector, um, what does that even mean, right? But it's like every, like 
every job that you could think of that would um, that a computer scientist or a um, an engineer would satisfy. It turns out that like people really enjoy and get excited about someone who's majored in physics because you have a slightly different pathway, but you still have those skills. You end up using a lot of the same skills, and so it's actually um, and it turns out it's actually easier to get into physics. Uh, degrees at uh, programs and four-year colleges than the other ones because it's not as um, sort of widely known as this like um, super versatile kind of career and so um, a lot of our students will go in and they will you know they'll be waffling between like in electrical engineering and physics and then they'll apply to both programs and they'll get in to one and not the other and that's sort of like but they still get to do the same career coming out of it so there's a lot of um there's a lot of work being done in physics education as well and thinking about how to make things more equitable um, and more supportive. Um, whereas in computer science, it's a sort of newer degree and people are sort of a little bit more cutthroat in general um, about getting through those programs. So I think, um, so that's a, just sort of another thing to think about is like beyond the two-year college, you know, as you're thinking about transferring, like what kind of environment you want to be in um what kind of programs are you looking at and sort of long term you know how do you get there and there's lots of multiple pathways usually to get to the same place at the end um so we have some like random questions here um but we also would love to hear questions from you like um anything and everything about um the college or about physics in general or stem classes um and I know Sean's just listening in, but if you have a way of communicating, we would love to hear anything that you're wondering. Or any of these three questions, are they kind of interesting to you or? Um, if someone went in with the express intent of like uh, teaching um, other, other extra classes, uh, around that or um it's like such a yeah it depends like, on which college you're going to okay yeah so um for us uh so uh, i'm gonna jump I, so i'm very excited about this question right because actually uh, my research is in physics education research uh and so i'm actually like in yeah, at south in particular if you're interested in teaching physics for example uh wow that would be amazing uh, we would become best friends and <laughs> and we would get to work together a lot because um the research that i do is looking at how phys how students learn physics and how to make it better right and so um there's a lot of support for that but there's also actual education uh classes you can take um which is sort of a different side of things but usually for teaching for physics you'll need to get a physics degree as well and so it's kind of an interesting like you end up usually getting like a master's in education if you're going for K-12 teaching. Depends on what kind of teaching you want to do. Oh, okay, I see. Thank you. I'd also say that there are some programs that I haven't spent probably as much time as I should have learning about, but like uh, Central Washington has a teach STEM program that it's designed towards getting people in K-12 classrooms teaching STEM subjects. And they have a, a way to complete that. I think in, in, there's a facility or a campus or a satellite area in Burien that actually does that program. So you don't have to go to Central Washington University to be able to complete that. Um, so that kind of, those kinds of opportunities are out there. We just have to spend a little more time kind of trying to figure out what they are and where they are. Okay, thank you. Are you, is that what you're thinking about? You think maybe you'd like to teach? Uh, that just came to me. Um, because I am a little older, so, um, and I do, um, yeah, that just, it was just an idea that popped into my head, and I thought I'd ask about, yeah. Yeah, and um, another awesome thing that we have is um, we actually pay students to tutor um, at South, and I know, I think this is across all three campuses, um, oh. so you, once you go through some of the classes, some of the, or if you're already passed some of the math classes, and when you come in, you can actually get paid to tutor other students and to sort of get at your get your foot in the door and like trying out the teaching kind of thing. And then we also have this thing called, ooh, I'm gonna say it wrong. I think it was peer navigators, but now it's tutor navigator. I don't think navigator. 
which is when you can go into the classroom itself. And so we actually have, I have a tutor navigator coming into my um, physics two class uh, this quarter and he just hangs out with us and helps students out. And when we work on our small group stuff and just gets another, another chance to get exposed to the ideas and also gets paid to come in and um, hang out with students. So it's pretty, it's really fun actually. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'll just and say another that... way to get more money. <laughs> yeah. Teaching is, it's challenging at times, but it's a very rewarding career too. So I, in some ways, a lot more job satisfaction than a lot of people I know do. Oh, that's good to hear, yeah. We're, we're very biased though. <laughs> <laughs> So both um, both Dr. Shaney and myself uh, got ended up getting PhDs. Um, and so we we're sort of like academics and we chose to go to South and teach at South because uh, we really focused on the the teaching part of it um, and making making better learning happen. And so we spend so many hours just like analyzing, like, how did that go in our classroom? How do we make it better for the next quarter? Um, you know, it's, it's actually like we have a running joke with the security because we're there sometimes really late at night, just sort of planning and hanging out and thinking about how we would make things better. Um, and the security guards always come into our classes late at night. We have a little hangout, you know, it's like, um, yeah. because like we're there and we care, we care a lot. So like, you know, if, if you're looking for a place where you want to be around people who are thinking about teaching physics all the time, like South is definitely, um, we're we're obsessed in a good way. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> good to hear. Yeah. 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 Ah. Um, Hong do you have yes. any more questions? Um, no, I don't. Um, wow. If I can get my son to listen to you too, <laughs> he might get really excited about physics. <laughs> Yeah, I hope I'm so. I mean, sure he wants to listen to the 45 minute recording of us all talking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a wonderful Friday evening affair. Well, that's the thing is that, you know, I was really surprised. Um, he, middle school was not, you know, um, very excited about school in, in general. But, um, and then he started, like again, in, in high school, I think it was one, one of his middle school teachers. Um, that kind of got him started in, in science. And uh, so he told me he did really well last quarter in physics. I'm like, really? <laughs> so yeah. a little little surprise from mom here. <laughs> That's great. That's great. He awesome. must have a teacher who made him excited too. Yeah. It can make a huge difference. Um, that's one of the things that we really emphasize in our classes too, is that, you know, um, learning in community can be fun and it can be much more supportive. So we try to really um, create a, an environment where students are working together and they know that they're working, they're not in competition with each other, but they're working together so that they can be successful as a community and move forward as a, as a cohort. Um, and so by the time they get through the whole two, two, three, uh, or all, all three of the um, physics courses, it's fun. We end up getting like funny emails later of like a group of students from a class that are going out to dinner together and things like that, because they really do end up bonding in a way that sometimes you don't always get in satellite campuses or places that are, you know, they're not living on campus. Right. So, um, so it, sometimes it can be harder in those situations to make those form those bonds and those friendships, but um, it's something we think is really important, right. Learning is fun to, to get in collaboration. Right. So um, yeah. And South isn't that far from North because I actually live <laughs> closer to the North <laughs> Seattle campus. So I'm just saying, um, actually, both of us, I think, live closer to North Seattle than, than uh, South. south. But, but the environment in South, I mean, not that we're supposed to be saying anything different. So maybe I shouldn't even say that. But I think that all three <laughs> campuses have people who really care, right? We're all, we're all people who have chosen specifically to focus on teaching as a career. And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of support in that way, which is really fun. It's a good environment to be in. And we have, a uh, just, I'll just keep talking until somebody interrupts me, but I mean, we also have a lot of students who um, email us mm -hmm. post um, gra um, graduating and transferring about how they end up feeling really more prepared than a lot of the students who go to the larger um, schools because they just, you know, they're just much more supportive. There's lots more one-on-one -on -one time and, and, um, the teacher to student ratio is so much smaller. 
And then they also come back and they're like, man, you know, I didn't know, like, I didn't know how, like how set up you said, like we, we had it actually this last quarter, someone emailed us and was like, we just, I just, all the classes I'm in are so much easier and, um, and my, all the other students are struggling and I just don't know what, the, what's going on with them. And so like, it's really fun to get those kind of emails too, because we really try to think about what's going to make you successful as you transfer into the school. Um, that kind of thing. I'll, know. I'll just also plug the South, again, Central North, wonderful campuses, but we have a very beautiful campus in South Seattle. It's got acreage. I'll just sell it. And it, it's on kind of just up above like the Boeing Field area and there's Greenbelt in the background and we have lots of uh, landscape, you know, like grass and, and hills. And from our classroom, you can see a view of downtown Seattle and the Olympic mountains like from one classroom. Like that's, I mean, most physics programs are in the basement and we have a view of <laughs> Olympic mountains. So, you know, it's like, it's a nice setting to learn physics in as well. <laughs> And I think actually, so just to to level it out a little bit, I think it's really awesome because each of the three campuses really have great affordances. So, you know, Central's right in the middle of Capitol Hill. So you have lots of access to lots of different restaurants and things. And it's sort of a much more active um, area in general, right? And South has much more... Um, be we are very isolated. It's hard huh? to get to. We're isolated. It's hard to get to without a car. Um, yeah. And you don't accidentally end up on our campus. Like you're not just like wandering around and you land at South. Like you don't end up on the one road that goes by the school <laughs> by yeah. accident. Yeah, so there is a bus route, um, but it is it is uh you know you have to be purposeful about that about using that. Whereas um, Central and North are both on the link on the light rail system, so you can get to those very easily um, in that way too. So um, yeah, it's just that they're really different campuses, and and the nice thing is is that they're really working on assimilating them assimilating it's not the right word they're working on like connecting them more e the administration is working on connecting them more easily for students so that students can go across and and take the classes that they need and want at different places when they need to so um i actually have a couple students this quarter who take classes at central and then they drive down and take my class after and so they're they're always coming in okay here i am here i am where you go kind of thing right right as the class starts you know so um it is possible to take multiple um, classes at multiple campuses. Oh, good. What other questions? Um, the nice thing about college transfer classes is that you don't really need equipment or materials. You just come and, you know, you need a pencil and a graphing calculator. Um, there is a small lab fee, but it's really insignificant compared to... Sean just put a question in the chat. Oh. He right. said, as a person who currently struggles with math, would physics be hard for me to get into? And I would say you can absolutely get into physics. Um, there is math that goes with it. So you'd want to work your way through the math sequence that, that leads up um, to it before you come come to physics is typically how, how it's done. But just because you currently haven't had the most best experience with math doesn't mean that physics is off limits for you. Um, it just means it might take a little more investment in that math in the beginning to get those fundamental skills down. And then you can build from there into the physics. Yeah, and there are actually a lot of, so we have a, a STEM class, STEM 111, which is uh, actually, which is running next quarter. So if you wanted to jump right in and try something, it's a class that doesn't require a lot of heavy math skills, but practices sort of modeling and thinking about relationships in a way that you will use in physics, but also works on those math skills in a sort of, um, lower stakes um, environment. So that STEM 111 class is awesome. And we we wish that all of our students would take it before they take our classes. Um, and it just sort of sets you up ready to go with a good foundation. And there's also an engineering um, class that's sort of an intro engineering class before you take all the heavier, harder uh, math wise classes. Um, and so there's, and there's also a STEM 118 class, which is looking at STEM and science and e equity and social justice. Um, and all of those classes are sort of like introductory classes to sort of get you sort of started into the program without having, while you're taking other math courses that are going to support you. Um, and at South, because we're from South, that's why we keep speaking about it. But at South, we have some amazing math teachers who really, really want to support you. Um, and um, if you email us, we can we can share with you like some of our recommendations for 
um, sort of thinking about that sequence for sure. Um, but yeah, so there, there are a lot of like a lot of really great math instructors as well. But the one thing I would recommend, um, and grain of salt, because I'm biased about this, but I would recommend if you're thinking about taking math classes is that you look for the ones that are in person um, as much as possible, or at the very least hybrid, because what we found is folks who are taking the online courses in math have some pretty, have some harder times in the physics classes when they come here. So, um, so yeah, so, so thinking about how do I, how do I uh, get into the classroom where I have full access to that instructor right there and I can just raise my hand or I can call them over in group work and say, I'm stuck, help me out. Um, and, and knowing that you are entitled to that, right? Like that's part of the classes um, that you should be able to have that. Um, oh my gosh. And I'll just say one more thing that we also have the tutoring center at South and at the other colleges is super robust for this. So, so Sean, if that's something like you should, you can, you can kind of live at the, the free tutoring center and you have a, a math tutor or three there at all times, just kind of waiting around if you have a question. Um, so definitely make use of those as well. I, but seriously, email us if you have questions about, you know, how, which math class should I take and how do I get into physics uh, sort of on that pathway. Thank you very much. And I, Yes, if we go to the Seattle uh, South Seattle College website, um, there's a department page. Or, um... Um, if you look up our names, so our names right there. Um, oh, okay. We have information on our people pages. Um, well, also, 